There's plenty of fish in the sea, and it's not always easy to decide which ones to eat. So what are the big differences between canned tuna and canned salmon? One of the most popular seafoods in the world, tuna, is a carnivorous fish that regularly grows to weigh several hundred pounds. Tuna boasts a meaty texture that stands up particularly well to canning, which transforms it into a fully cooked, easy-to-use pantry staple. Whether fresh or canned, tuna is low in fat and rich in protein. It also boasts quite a few essential nutrients like vitamin B12, iron, and omega-3 fatty acids. These healthy fats are known for their nutritional benefits, notably contributing to improved brain health. <gasps> Omega-3 fatty acids have also been known to reduce general inflammation and may even help reduce the risk of heart disease and metabolic disease. While both canned and fresh tuna boast these health benefits, canned has quite a few advantages over fresh. For example, canned tuna enjoys a much longer shelf life and is far less expensive than its raw counterpart. Notably, mercury contamination is generally a concern in tuna, as high levels of mercury can harm the development of the nervous system in unborn babies and young children. That said, since canned tuna is usually younger, than the type preferred to sell fresh, it tends to contain lower levels of mercury. Canned salmon might not be as commonplace as canned tuna, but at the end of the day, it's a fairly similar product that can be used in much the same way. Like canned tuna, canned salmon is a fully cooked, shelf-stable product that's rich in protein and omega-3 fatty acids, and boasts a far longer shelf life and lower price point than its fresher counterpart. Canned salmon, like fresh, may be wild-caught or farmed, with wild salmon being far denser in key nutrients and containing up to three times less fat than farm-raised salmon. Given the price discrepancy, between farmed and wild salmon, opting for canned, wild-caught salmon can help make the most of the fish's higher nutritional properties without shelling out quite so much money. And if the nutritional profile of the fish is your top concern, it's interesting to note that canned salmon is even more nutritious than fresh. This stems from the fact that the small pin bones in a salmon fillet soften significantly during the canning process, essentially melting into the fish and suffusing it with added calcium. This mineral joins selenium and vitamin B12 in rendering canned salmon a superfood, truly worthy of the name. Scientists believe that the first human being who will live 150 years has already been born. I believe I am that human being. Perhaps the biggest difference between canned salmon and canned tuna comes down to their nutritional profiles. While both are good sources of protein, tuna edges salmon out slightly, with 21 grams of protein per 3-ounce portion, as compared to just 17 grams for the same amount of salmon. Salmon comes out on top nearly everywhere else, however. For example, canned salmon contains a little more vitamin B12 and a whopping 14 times more vitamin D than canned tuna. It also contains over 1,500 milligrams of healthy omega-3 fatty acids per 3-ounce portion as opposed to somewhere between 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams for tuna, depending on the species. But tuna isn't just a winner in the protein category. It's also lower in calories than salmon, with just 93 per 3-ounce portion as compared to 121 for salmon, a discrepancy that comes down to the higher healthy fat content found in salmon. Tuna also boasts over twice the selenium and just over twice the niacin of canned salmon, the former of which is beneficial for thyroid, metabolic, and cognitive function, and the latter of which is known for improving blood fat levels, reducing blood pressure, and even improving skin health. Raw fresh tuna can be one of the most expensive fish out there, with bluefin tuna specifically fetching in the hundreds or even thousands of dollars. But when it comes to the canned stuff, there's no getting around it. Tuna is a far better deal than salmon. Canned tuna usually costs somewhere around $1.60 to $1.80 per 5-ounce can, with lower-grade tunas fetching as little as 80 or 90 cents per can. Canned salmon, meanwhile, starts at around $1.90 per 5-ounce can. And what's more, canned salmon prices can quickly skyrocket, with a better quality salmon reaching $9 per 6-ounce can. Even imported Italian tuna packed in olive oil, some of the best on the market, costs just around the $7 mark per 5.6-ounce can, a fraction of the cost of the priciest salmon. Both canned tuna and canned salmon are available in different forms. They can vary depending on the species of fish that's being canned, the liquid in which the fish is suspended, or even the size of the pieces in the can. When it comes to salmon, entry-level canned salmon is usually basic pink salmon, while premium canned salmon may use sockeye or chinook. The best quality canned salmon might even contain wild Alaskan salmon. Salmon is usually canned in water, though you can occasionally find it canned in oil. When it comes to canned tuna, you'll encounter far more choices. 
skipjack is perhaps the most common type of canned tuna, seeing as it's so abundant in our oceans. This fish boasts a relatively soft texture, which means it's often canned in chunks, rather than sold whole or solid. Yellowfin tuna boasts a rich flavor, particularly beloved by European brands, while white tuna, also known as albacore, is tasty and firm, with a mild flavor and a natural salinity. Tuna may easily be found canned in anything from oil to water to broth, and you'll find tuna canned solid, as one whole piece, or in chunks. Both tuna and salmon are carnivorous fish, which means that mercury could be a concern in either. Fish can absorb mercury naturally via bacteria in waterways, and the larger and more predatory a fish is, the more mercury it is likely to contain. This is because fish also absorb the mercury of the fish they consume. Eating too much fish that's high in mercury can have negative effects on brain development and can even be toxic, which is why pregnant and nursing women must be particularly wary of it. But while many fish contain mercury, tuna is one of the most contaminated out there, with some species of tuna containing nearly 60 micrograms of mercury mercury per 3-ounce serving. Luckily, canned tuna contains far less mercury than fish, in large part due to the fact that it's usually the smaller, younger tuna that are processed in this way. Canned albacore contains about 29.75 micrograms of mercury, or 0.350 parts per million per 3 ounces, while canned light tuna contains just 10.71 micrograms or 0.126 parts per million. That said, if mercury is a concern, you're much better off opting for salmon. Canned salmon contains an average of just 0.014 parts per million of mercury, a fraction of the load of even light tuna. Tuna can be canned in anything from water to brine to oil, but the latter is perhaps the unsung hero of the grocery store shelf. While oil-packed tuna may not be the most traditional ingredient in tuna salad, once you give it a try, you'll see why so many swear by it. Not only does that added oil give canned tuna loads more flavor, but when you opt for olive oil-packed tuna, the resulting product is even richer in healthy monounsaturated fats, antioxidants, and vitamin D. The oil from a can of tuna boasts loads of flavor, too. So rather than throwing it away, cooks can save it and use it elsewhere in the kitchen. Let's get cooking. For example, it can be used to add flavor to vinaigrettes for a salad niçoise, deliver more moisture to pan-seared tuna patties, or offer an alternative to a mayo-based dressing for a classic tuna salad sandwich. While you can also find salmon canned in oil, it's not nearly as widespread as oil-packed tuna. And even when you can find it, salmon is frequently canned in vegetable oil rather than olive oil. Since this more processed oil is higher in saturated fat, oil-packed canned salmon is no healthier than water-packed salmon, and could even be considered a worse choice from a nutritional standpoint. Rampant overfishing and rising ocean temperatures mean that it's more important than ever to source our seafood sustainably. Unfortunately, over half of the tuna sold in the U.S. is considered unsustainable by industry experts. Tuna is often fished by purse seine, which can trap dolphins and other sea mammals, contributing to rampant bycatch. And while smaller, more sustainable tuna species are often preferred for canning, buying truly sustainable canned tuna requires a bit of extra work on the part of the consumer. Shoppers must be vigilant in reading labels seeking out terms such as pole caught or troll caught to make sure they're not contributing to the problem with their purchases. Salmon fisheries, however, are much better managed than tuna, in large part thanks to salmon's natural inclination to return to the same place to spawn each year, which renders data collection a whole lot easier. And while salmon, like tuna, is a carnivorous predator, it eats further down the food chain than tuna, rendering it a slightly more sustainable choice. Compounded with the widespread use of sustainable fishing methods in salmon fisheries, salmon is hands down the more sustainable choice. If you prefer your fish on the less, well, fishy side, tuna might be the choice for you. Despite its famous odor, rendering it a trope of unpleasant coworker-packed lunches, canned tuna actually has a relatively mild flavor, especially compared to other canned fish, such as sardines or mackerel. This holds especially true if you pick white albacore tuna, which boasts a firmer texture and perhaps the mildest flavor of any type of canned tuna. Once it's seasoned with mayonnaise, onion, and celery in a classic tuna salad, tuna becomes so mild and fishy flavor that you might even mistake it for chicken.
Canned salmon, on the other hand, has a slightly more robust flavor, which will come as no surprise to anyone who's sampled fresh tuna and fresh salmon side by side. While canned salmon is a bit less richly flavored than fresh, it nevertheless boasts more fishiness than canned tuna. And it also proves slightly brinier than fresh salmon. Pink salmon is certainly the mildest of the lot, but it's still fairly assertive when compared to canned tuna. And as you move into more upmarket canned salmons like sockeye, the flavor will become even more robust and pronounced. For some, this is a benefit. But for those who don't like particularly fishy fish, it can certainly be a deterrent. Set a plate of fresh seared ahi tuna next to a plate of tuna salad, and it would be hard to believe they each use the same main ingredient. But this difference is not quite as polarizing when it comes to salmon, which boasts the same rich pink color and flaky texture whether cooked fresh or enjoyed out of the can. Of course, nobody's saying a can of salmon could stand in for a poached salmon filet, but in some cases, it can be hard to tell the difference between fresh and canned. Such is the case of the viral Emily Mariko fish bowl, which one TikTok user said is so good they couldn't even tell the salmon in it was canned. This holds even more true for dishes like croquettes or salmon patties, where salmon is flaked and bound with other ingredients such as breadcrumbs for an even less flagrant distinction. While canned salmon is certainly more expensive than canned tuna, using canned salmon in place of fresh is a budget-friendly choice that's just as delicious and nutritious.